Welcome to the Riot Podcast, where we have practical discussions on how to share your faith, see the news from God's eyes, and answer some of faith's hardest questions. Welcome to the Riot Podcast, everybody. This is episode 50, and I am so excited to be joined today woo, with woo, Pete woo. Robertson. What's up? And Barry Rice. I'm back. He's back again. Well, he was here last week. I know. Rooms, but yeah. He's but still that's back. good. He came back this week. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's a huge Two weeks part in a row. Our- What's up, baby? What's up? <laughs> he's a huge part of if our you guys shows. are not watching on YouTube right now, you are missing out. We if have our we have hats on. Gold sparkly hats. We have big 50s everywhere. We got everywhere. balloons everywhere. We, we, got, we got, I don't know, streamers. Streamers all over the place. We've got a marching band down. No, well, that's no, not true. We can but, be serenaded maybe later. <laughs> It's exciting. But we are 50th episode, guys. This is amazing. It's because of you guys. Yeah. So really cool. Uh, we're going to celebrate. We're going to have a little fun. We're going to reminisce. And uh, we're going to just going to be a great show. I am pumped up and excited. But before we get to that, talk about coming home. Somebody's been in Europe. You want to tell us a little bit about the trip? Yeah, it was fun. That's it. Okay, good. <laughs> we're moving on. Barry, what have you been up to? So, you want me to talk about it? Yes. Or you can't move on You that have quick. got to talk about such a trip. We just Man. went to, so if you know, we went to France, we went to Italy, we traveled up from Rome to Venice to Florence to Verona, all the way up into France. We did all French Riviera, Monaco, Monte Carlo. We did Paris. Uh, it was a long trip. It was great. But what made it fun was listening to the Riot Podcast. We Listening to last week to Ramblin' Rambling was hilarious what'd you guys think it of was last a week's high episode quality show yeah people you need let us know let it us know so what good. you think it we had funny. fun doing it that's for sure yeah but i liked it so tell us about driving a lambo in monaco no but that's it's everywhere if anybody has ever been to Man- monaco um it it's really weird because you see lamborghinis you see all these high-end classes cars everywhere and a lot of rich people and you're just like what in the world is going on here there's it's just weird it's a weird vibe but um there's a lot of i think corruption and a lot of bad money that goes there i think there's a lot of money laundering or something i don't know so tell me i wonder if there's anyone that listens to the cast there uh i don't know if they do hey i I heard that you put up our cards in every bathroom (laughs) (laughs) that's a good idea you should have done that especially in english speaking we could right. do like, like, like it would probably be cheaper for us to do like a banner in like India because India is our number two market outside of the United States. And a lot of them speak English. Um, it's the largest English speaking nation in the world. Well, there you go. Yeah. And there's more people speaking English in India than the, all of people in the United States. There's over 300, 400 million people that speak English in India. Wow. Yeah. Just try to imagine that. Is it the UK English or is it the American English? It's, it's Indianish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, but i do i love their accent yeah. you know they they speak english with a uh with a british accent I yeah some of them do yeah especially in the big cities like bombay mumbai yeah where where english present was big what miss i, have, I have to say something yeah so on our trip we had um a private driver the first few nights and he was indian and it is the most strangest thing to hear an Indian talk in a French. Oh, you're talking to the France driver? Yes. He was from Sri Lanka, but yes, he was because Sri Lanka and India are the same. Same. Yeah. yeah. But a French accent. Yeah. It was throwing me off. It wasn't all, like I this. Mean, and he didn't, he didn't have a do, but actually like this. He no. was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was hard to say. It was nuts. <laughs> All of our Indian listeners are like, that was an awful accent. But they try to practice English with me. And so I like to practice <laughs> Indian with them. I mean, that's how it works. <laughs> they sometimes like, what's up, dog? So how you doing, dude? So Pete, tell me, <laughs> what's up, dog? Pete, tell me, what was your favorite part of the trip? Is there like just one, like a memory that you're like, man, that, that was awesome. That's going to stick with me the rest of my life. Italy was overwhelming. It's, I mean, in a good way where the food was amazing. The people were amazing. Um, overwhelming just because there's so much history and, and from a biblical perspective, it's overwhelming. And, um, so that was awesome. As far as beauty, uh, the French Riviera, it's not like what they try to make it out to be. It's pretty, but, the the city of Ez in the French Riviera, if anybody goes to Nice or to Cannes or to Monaco, 
go to the city of Ez. It is absolutely amazing. Up on the hills, overlooks the, the Riviera. It's just so beautiful. Um, as far as Paris, I mean, Paris is just like every big city, right? You have your, your things and, and all that. I mean, it's, I don't know. I mean, it's okay. It's pretty. The architecture is pretty. You know? Did you eat snails? No, we didn't do that. Then do escargot. No, no, they do a lot of meat there. And what's really funny is. Well, that sounds like my type of place. Right? Yeah. Meat. Yeah, yeah, a lot of meat. They have a lot of meat, a lot of chicken. Um, it was good. A lot of fish, a lot of fish areas. But uh, the French cuisine was great. I think I, overall, though, I, I love the Italian cuisine better. I don't know. It was just, it was fun. In your blood, man. Yeah, it was just fun. We had a lot of fun. It was, we laughed a lot. You know, we just, we were like overwhelmed though. So if you do what we did, we did 13 days in, in that should have been 20 days. And so at the very end of it, after work, after walking 25, 30,000 steps every day, your body kind of hurts. <laughs> and so you need to, you yeah. need to sit in the bathtub. It was you need a vacation salt. from your vacation. Yeah. yeah. So you woke up at the end saying, man, I don't know if I want to get up, huh? Yeah. I think the biggest thing was we wanted to get back to everybody else. That was the hard part. Just being away from family. You missed Barry. I missed everybody. Yeah, absolutely. We thought about you. You know, what's so funny is I have this thing where I do my prayer time and I was texting our life group that we're at and I was just telling them praying for you guys today. And I did that a few times, but you guys came up too. And it's just like, as you, as I'm going through my thing, I just start praying for people. That's how I stay connected. It's like, you know, you just, you're praying for the person we're on the other side of the planet, but we're still kind of connected because we're praying. And so that's kind of how you know, that's how I stayed that way. But, and it keeps you focused too. You know, I think everybody wants to know, well, how was COVID there? You know? Well, they are, they are like, you can't go into a restaurant without showing your COVID vaccination passport or um, show that you have a negative test. Um, you can't go anywhere and it's pretty strict. And so everywhere we went, we felt like they did an overly good job at protecting people from something, you know, so they test you. I feel like it's going to be coming here soon where they're going to start mandating, you know, you can't go into somewhere and so forth. I think that's just, it's inevitable. But so did you get the feel that everybody was vaccinated around you? Uh, they said that in Italy, it was like 85%. Yeah, it was okay. very high. And then most people that landed there, cause we were, when we landed in Rome, uh, I would say 99% were vaccinated coming off what do you plane. mean on the plane yeah well the plane i would say 100 percent. that seemed like and coming off i mean it's because they they show you you have a vaccination card and then they have the your your test whatever and everybody's going through the vaccination oh huh. yeah it was very high what you said 85 percent. yeah that's what they told what, us what is it here in the u.s I think it was 56 or something like that, right? That's it? I don't know. I'm seven. I don't, honestly don't know. Yeah, but their kids are vaccinated and all, I mean, a lot of stuff there where our kids aren't. You mean much. under 12? Yeah. Under 12 do it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't want to get into that. Well, we're in Orlando, <laughs> so I've got to ask, <laughs> how was Disney, Disneyland, Disney, whatever they call it in Paris? How was that? It's beautiful. It's small. Um, they had, um, let's see, what did they have different? They had, uh, there was a tram ride for... What was that tram ride cars. for cars? California Adventure has a really cool cars uh, show. That's in California, um, in Disneyland, California, where it's a car, you're in a car. You're actually in the car for the movie Cars, and you're driving around in the you know Route thing. 66. Yeah, Route 66. There they had a tram, so kind of like international or uh, Universal Tours. You know where you have the tram backlot tours. They had a tram like that. That was different. Um, they had the house. They had all the other same ones. They had the same star tours. They had the same Ratatouille. Ratatouille, yeah. Well, they're the original of <laughs> Ratatouille. Awesome. Yeah. And then it's now an Epcot down in Disney World. But I would say uh, Disney World overall, out of the three parks I've been to, so Disneyland in California and California Adventure and all Disney World and Paris, Disney World is the best by far. Like right ahead. I mean, I don't know how to explain it. I think Disneyland is better than all of them. Really? It's better than Magic Kingdom for sure. Hmm. Disneyland's all the rides at Disneyland are better. The way so we need up. to do the show in, in Anaheim. Yeah. But overall, Disney World is the best. That's just okay. my humble opinion. All right. Let's move on. That's awesome. Yeah. What have you been up to, Barry? Hey, we've been really working hard on planting this church and getting our team together. And and uh, that's been going amazing. We had a great picnic this past weekend. And and God is bringing an incredible team together. I'm so excited and uh, just had my head down to the grind with that. So that's what we've been doing. And speaking of 50, I, I my uh, 
my girlfriend is turning 50 uh, very soon. So that's kind of another. Uh, His forever can, girlfriend. Can I, can I borrow the Yeah, the no balloons? kidding. <laughs> I know, right? Do they last that long? Maybe you should take a little with you. <laughs> yep, that's that's what's been going on. So what about, uh, so what's up? So Rambler Ramblings this week, we have 50th show. It's exciting. I, can it, you believe we're here? I know. Yeah. No, it's it's hard to believe. It's, it's flown been, by. It's been a year. Yeah. I mean. It's been coming up on a couple of weeks here. It'll be a year. Yeah. We've done a show every week, right? I don't think yeah. we've skipped a week and that's 50. Yeah. That's 50. So we're like two weeks away from our one year anniversary. This is awesome. So go back to the very beginning. Uh, yeah. The first part. Remember when we first started it? I, I, we didn't have a clue what we were doing. <laughs> What's a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not true. I, we were just, we were, I mean, we were fumbling around. I remember the first airing we had like the the machine didn't work or the sound wasn't working or the, we, we, we got 20 it, minutes in and didn't have a nothing, recording. Nothing. Yeah. We had that a, half, a couple of times where we would record and then it wouldn't happen. Do you remember I, I remember how tired I was after the first couple deals. You I'm know? still that way. Yeah. After the show, I'm exhausted. It does. I mean, especially the shows. some of the shows, I mean, let's just be honest. Some shows stretch the heck out yeah. of us. Yeah. They're exhausting. Well, just because it's like complicated. We're talking about subjects that are like above our heads yep. and we're doing our best to just stay above flow. Stay but, above float. Is that what, like above water? Yeah. Okay. I stay above. Yeah, that works. <laughs> I was just wondering. That would be Is a that lot. something you picked up in Italy? I don't know. That would be something that we, if you listen to our shows, we say a lot of things that don't make any sense. Well, there you go. But you kind of uh, can figure it out. Yeah, it makes sense. Do you remember what we talked about on our first show? No, oh, do you? I think so. What? I'm not positive. I think we were talking about the election. Oh, that's right. Because I think it was the week of the election. I think so. I think we talked about politics a lot because during that time, That's, that was the new cycle twenty four seven. Everybody yeah. talked about yeah. politics. I yeah, that I remember we, that. I need we, to go we back. Had and been a couple of weeks out from the from the uh, from the election, didn't we? Or no? I think so. It was right around that time. Yeah, I think. And I remember Barry's like, up. "Dude, can we it turn was, the it page?" Was, it was October, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. I think yeah. it was. Yeah. I got to go back and listen to it now. Yeah, we should have probably did our homework, but that just shows you right there. I mean, it seems like forever ago, but in some ways and in other ways, it's like, really? 50 already? Yeah. That's really cool. I can tell you this. It kind of rescued me out of uh, COVID. It really did. It really brought me back. Yeah, that's true. It really helped me with that. And I think it helped a lot of people. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, let me ask a different question then before you kind of get into some of these really cool stats. Um, If you don't remember what our first show was. What was your favorite show? And that this is for Barry and for Pete. What what was your favorite show, if you have one? And you can't just say last week because that's too easy. No, that was a lot of fun. It was. <laughs> I I mean, it's there's so many, but I I think I think Barry and I just already talked about the mission minded shows were probably my favorite. I think it was. I think if you would cut us open as a three guys and Christine, that would be our heart. I think that was the mission minded men- mentality. I think would just really be how we live our lives, how we think, how we function. Um, that, and then, um, yeah, I think that was probably the best. You were probably saying that too, right? Yeah, definitely the mission mindedness. Uh, the the several shows we did that, and uh, but that is our heart, man. We we just want to see people live in in purpose. Yeah. What did you say time. in our the five year? We were talking about what are our oh, five year plans. That was good. And Barry, what did you say what your five-year plan was? Yeah. Well, my my number one goal in five years to look back and see that there have been disciples made and that people's lives have been impacted. You know, that's that's the bottom line. Because people ask me, what is your five-year plan? I, said, I have no idea. I don't know what my day is planned for the next morning, next day. But you can say with that with a with a certainty. That if your mindset is to disciple and to love people and to lift people up and to help people walk closer to Jesus, and you look back in five years and that you could see people having that testimony because of things that you've done with them in their lives. This is amazing. I thought that was the most perfect answer for next time someone asks me, I got an answer now, you know, and you guys that are listening next time someone asks you, that should be your mission minded. That should be your purpose. But that's how you live, Pete, man. That's, that's really how you live. And that's, that's how I try to live and and Bob as well. Yeah impact people's lives for the kingdom of God. That's, That's awesome. But you put it into words, Barry. I like it. Yeah. I like it. it I'm trying to think of what my favorite show would be. 
Well, you know what stuck out to me is kind of some of the shows where we had we had guests on. Yeah. And the first one that really sticks out, maybe I, it might have been our first guest JD. when when we had JD on. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was special. And and part of it was because I seeing Barry and JD interact on the podcast was really cool to me. Um, it's not just that he did his homework. Number one. Yeah, he, he was he an is amazing ultra guest. intelligent. He can come back anytime. And he, wants. he and he can communicate at such a high yeah. level. Yeah. So yeah. it was really good. You know, at the at the time we were like, whoa, we're getting such huge response from this show. Man, so many people are listening to it. But the topic was, should we take the COVID vaccine? <laughs> and so people are like, yeah, I need to listen to that. But we, we should do that again. We couldn't have picked anything better though than JD picking it. So that, that was, was really awesome. Cool. That was yeah. a great I so that was that one really sticks out in my mind. And uh I, I think the, the one we did with uh Pastor Chad really sticks out yeah. with Pastor Rick. So there's a I, I maybe I like having guests on this show. Maybe that's what I mean is. the one with Pastor Chad was with because that was is our church broken. Yeah, that was a tough the one. culture one. That was that one when we left that show, we felt spent. Yeah. That was a stretch show. But that show, if you guys listen to that, go back. What was the episode that was? Uh, I have it written down here somewhere. Pa episode 31. If you go back and listen to that, that show will really impact you. It will really bless you because it will help you ask a lot of questions and work through kind of where we are as a culture today with as the church. Um, but that was a really good show. Yeah. Powerful. Awesome. Yeah. You know what our number one listen to show? I can't wait to hear. Okay. So the number one, our longest viewership uh, is the spiritual journey with Jesus. So we have more people that listen. So our average on YouTube, okay, this is not our, our podcast listeners. This is YouTube. They listen for 20 minutes and 44 seconds. And so we had, how many people we had? We had over 14,000 listeners on that show for spiritual journey with Jesus. They listened for an average of 20 minutes and 44 wow. seconds. Wow. I mean, just try to put that into a perspective. So spiritual 14, journey. 14,000 listen for 20 minutes. Yeah. We got, we got, um, we got ridiculed on that show though. If you remember. So there was someone that said, listen, it was a spiritual journey with Jesus, but you guys didn't talk about the spiritual journey with Jesus too much. And that was the show that we couldn't come up with a title. If you remember, we were having trouble with, I don't know how to title That's this show. Right. We don't know we're how really to title struggling it. struggling with that. And we struggled and struggled and struggled with that show. And then all of a sudden, we we just put that on there because in a nutshell, it was talking about the spiritual journey, but we really didn't get into too much of the spiritual journey. But that was the most listened to show. So that title really attracted What episode people. was that? It was episode, oh, I don't have it. Shoot. I don't have it written down. Okay. We can find it. But yeah, so spiritual journey. The second longest show was the COVID miracle show. So that's when we had, you weren't here for that one. That's when we had our oh, guest, your Mauricio. Friend from, um, where's it from, Vegas? It's from uh, Nevada, uh, Utah, Utah. St. George, Utah. So we had, uh, I think it was 8,000 listeners on wow. that one. Wow. And we had 20 minutes and 33 seconds was the second longest listen show. So everybody listens for 20 minutes. So anybody that knows our on our podcast, when we listen, so Apple, Google, all of that, we have about 85% of our listeners listen full cycle. So they listen to the whole thing. But on YouTube, right about the seven minute mark, we have 60% of the people go boop. And yeah, it just yeah, yeah. So off. if you're watching on YouTube, yeah. even if you walk away, let it keep running. Yeah. Don't turn it <laughs> off. <laughs> So stop walking away in seven get, minutes. So on YouTube to get a 20 minute mark is a big deal. Right. Yeah. And I think only like 1% or 2% of our listeners on YouTube, our viewers actually listen to the whole thing. So like our law, our biggest aired show was uh, the 28,000. Do you remember which show that was? We had 28,000 views on that one. I forget. I thought I had it. I, I think you have it in the notes. Do I? I'm looking now, guys. We'll sing so there's no yeah, dead air. Yeah. Barry, go ahead and sing. 20, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then everybody would push off. No, Stop. maybe it's not in there. No, yeah. Anyway, our, our biggest show had 28,000, and we had 1% listen to the whole thing. So, like, 28,000, 1% is a lot. That was Why men and women struggle with sexual sin? Yeah, that's our, log, our biggest show. So if you guys want to know why men and women struggle with sexual sin, listen to that show. We had 28,000 people 
uh, listening wow. to that. So if you put sex in the title, people will, will that's, listen. Yeah, it's just like our Michael Jackson show. You remember that? Yes. That was one of our early shows, yeah, right? Yeah. Like one of our first five, maybe. Yeah. So we we first put in, we put Michael Jackson <laughs> in the title and uh, Mark was that. Coach, you weren't on that one either. Coach Mark was on that one. And oh all of a sudden my. we had this hit. Everybody was like listening to this show or like, wait, why are they listening for it? Mark's not, you know, whatever. But uh, that's we, when you we, realize we, titles matter, right? That was a fun show talking about Mark. That he was just talking about all the sh- all the people he met at Disney and, and I love Michael Mark. Jackson. He's and, funny. Yeah, that was hilarious. So, but that was fun. Yeah. So 20, 20 minutes. So we've had over two hundred and twenty eight thousand total views on YouTube. I mean, just thank try you to guys wow. so much for that. That's awesome. I mean, try to imagine that. That's insane. We had two eight two thousand eight hundred seventy four subscribers as of today on That's, YouTube. On YouTube. Yeah, we have we average two hundred eight new subscribers each month. So we're almost to three thousand. Almost. subscribers on YouTube. we'll have we'll be there next month wow and we average around thirty thousand views and click-throughs each month on our channel so just imagine that so about thirty thousand people go to youtube or go oh we're just riot podcast now so you guys if you guys look on youtube if you just do riot podcast youtube you're gonna find us now because they finally accepted us yeah as an actual channel it's taken us this long to get there so now you'll find us if you go looking for us before people are like, I can't find you anywhere. Now you will be able to find us. And what is it called again? Spiritual Journey with Jesus is episode 42. Episode, episode 42. 42. 42. Yeah. Spiritual Journey with so Jesus. go back to the YouTube channel again. What It's just Riot Podcast or the Riot Podcast? No, it's Riot Podcast. Riot Podcast. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. if you're listening to this on... Uh, you you know, just put in YouTube Riot Podcast. You'll there find you go. Us. Yeah. Perfect. I had you search. I searched. That's right. And you found and it. And it worked. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Pulled it right up. First pa- And first page on the Google page yep. too. So. Yep. Yeah, people are gonna we're find finally it. there. And that that shows you like one of our statistics when I was telling you that about 50 to 60 people, this one blows my mind. This one blesses me. So 50 to 60 people that are searching randomly for topics, find us every single month and watch us. So that's so they're not looking specifically for the right podcast. They may no, be searching Jesus that's or it, that's it. And this whatever. is before we were actually on as a channel. I mean, we were we had to be at 225,000 views or something like that. I don't know, something weird to get us the actual channel. But those were people that are actually randomly just doing that. So that well, let's put this me. let's put this in perspective for our people. That's 228,000 people who have heard the gospel and have been encouraged by God's word. Some way, somehow. Yeah. Wow. Come yeah. on, man. That's that's that is an incredible statistic for one year of a ministry. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. I, I would say, yeah. And I would say like our YouTube listeners are not as faithful as our podcast listeners. I think our podcast listeners are more of our core base. So let's talk about those statistics. So these are the people that are downloading on Apple podcasts, Android podcasts, uh, Pandora and Stitchers and iHeartRadio that not, not uh, Spotify. That's different. So out of those, we have 3,550 full downloads. That means they're full listens. So 3,550. We average around 75 downloads a week on our podcast channel. Not YouTube, but this is just our podcast. About 50% of our listeners are of Apple, 28% is Google, and 8% is Pandora. Okay, so that that does not include our Spotify listeners. From what I understand, there's about 25 to 50 downloads every week on our Spotify, which is our second biggest download. So if you add that up, we're probably about 125 downloads a week just from those platforms. And they listen, 80% of them listen all the way through. Huge, huge. So I put that in perspective. So what does that mean? So the average podcast gets 27 uh, listeners per episode. So this is the statistics by podcast the statistic people. Anyway, so, <laughs> so, they get, so the average podcast gets 27 listens per episode. If you have more than 26 downloads, you're in the top 50% of the podcast. So if you have 26 downloads, if you have 72 downloads, more than 72, you're in the 25%. So just our our Apple and whatever, we're over 75 downloads a week. This is a week, people. So we're in the 25 percentile. If you have more than 231, you're in the 10 percent. So if you add Spotify in there, we're about 150. That's just on our podcast, not our YouTube channel. You guys, this is just, it just blows my mind. How the heck did that happen in 50 episodes? All because of our amazing listeners. 
I, are we funny looking? Is that what it is? People want to, or wait, they can't even they hear can't, us on that. Well, they can, they can hear us. They can't see us. So our, our voices are sexy. Then. So you is have, that what a, it is? you have a face for radio is what they like to say. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> Put a bag on yourself. Just talk. <laughs> I think it's just the favor of God, Pete. There and, you go. And his hands being Amen. on us and him blessing himself, because that's really what we want to give these listeners. We want to give them Jesus. That's it. And Jesus said, I am the word. I am the living word. And, uh, you know, his, his word doesn't come back void. Right. Yeah. And, uh, we know that so in this podcast is making a difference. And if it's made a difference in you, we got to hear from yes. you. Yeah. We, we need that encouragement. We want to hear, and we want to brag on you. We, yeah. we want to hear what God's doing in your life. Yeah, if, if I mean, speaking of that, so we want to give you a free T-shirt and we'll give you a gift card. We, we don't know what size of the gift card, depends on how many people respond. But if you go to our Facebook page or our YouTube page or our Twitter page or our Instagram page and you respond and just say, hey, the podcast is talk to me this way or you guys have really encouraged me or give us something with your name, we will contact you and send you a shirt and some sort of gift card, no matter where you are in the world. And uh, we just like to hear from you and we like to bless you that way. So, and it just blesses us to hear. Sometimes we, you know, if anybody, anybody has followed us on Facebook, sometimes you just see a lot of hate, yeah. you know. Uh, we've had some episodes where we've gotten just hate after hate after hate. And we don't have too many people stand up for us and fight for us, but, uh, but sometimes there are, but have you guys seen that? Again? A little bit. Yeah. But, and, but please jump on there and comment. Honestly, that's where we've got a lot of our show ideas have been from yeah. the comments, whether positive or negative, yeah. but that's kind of sparked the interest to be like, Hey, let's, let's do a show on that. And let's talk about that some more. So. I think that's really cool. So, so the perspective on that is that God has called us to be salt and light. Yeah. And I remember as a little boy taking a handful of salt and, and putting it in the eye of a cow, of a cow, a calf, because they had pink eye wow. and that salt would go in there. It would burn <clears throat> like crazy. It would be gritty, but it would heal that calf. <clears throat> and I see some of the, you know, the haters out there, it's because they're feeling the salt yeah. and, and it's okay, man. It really is. It's okay to hate on us, but because we're, we're sharing God's word and we're, we're opening up the discussion. And, and I, I guarantee you this, if, if you're listening to this and you're one of our haters, I want you to know, we love you <laughs> and that we, we want what God wants for you. And we want what God's, we want God's best for you. You know, the, the, one of the things with the haters is most of them don't listen to the show. They just go by the title. And they start commenting they based start on what they think it says. The yeah. 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 You can tell sometimes they didn't yeah. even listen by their comments. Yeah. Some of them that do listen, though, would be different. But our, our second largest um, um, uh, area of listen is India. So we have, and we were just saying that, that India has, what, 500 million English speakers in that country. So we have a lot of pastors there that, that have listened to us. Then UK, France, Sierra Leone. That comes to us. Sierra Leone is in Africa. So we have pastors that have listened to us there. If you guys are there, hey, hello, how you doing? Um, Pastor Joffrey or Joffrey came on the show and he was one of our guests. You remember that? We talked about great. discipleship, natural discipleship. Uh, that man is just filled with wisdom. We were talking on that show. I remember something to highlight you said, Barry, was that this guy just breathes the scripture, just naturally, just the word of God just comes out of him. Amen. Um, but he is a discipler and he's been discipling pastors, discipling disciples in Africa. And so Sierra Leone and then Belgium. Hi, Belgian people. We would love to hear from you. <laughs> Who are you? Yeah, we want to know. I want to talk to you because we know you're listening. Um, we're also in all 50 states. Can you believe that, guys? Even North Dakota? Yes, we're all 50 states. We have Hawaii, somewhere. Alaska. Yeah, Come all on. 50 states. That's There's awesome. like 10 of the states that only have one download. Thank you for that faithful right. yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, but we are all 50 states. The largest is Florida, obviously, California, uh, New Jersey, Virginia, Texas, Tennessee, Ohio, Michigan. But we're all 50 states. It's just crazy. That's really cool. Yeah. So I don't know. That's it. So let's do this. Um, let's listen to a clip of how to identify spiritual attack. We had over 14,000 views on um, YouTube, and I'm not sure how many on our podcast listeners, but just listen to that clip. Let's just talk about it and kind of bring back what we remember on that. So how to identify spiritual attack. We had our guest, uh, Pastor uh, Rick Blythe, was on that attack. So let's listen and, and hear. 
Have you ever felt like <laughs> no matter what you do or what you say, there's something out there to get you? Hmm. Well, as a follower of God, the Bible tells us that there is a cosmic war happening and we are the battlefield. God wants us to follow him, but there is an enemy, the devil, who is doing everything he can to make us choose anything but God. Hmm. The Bible goes so far to say the enemy seeks to steal, kill, and destroy us in John 10.10. He's got a lot of experience and has a solid playbook, but, you know, and, you know, we're not saying that every bad thing that happens in your life is a supernatural attack, but there is an enemy working against you. Um, first Peter five, eight says, be sober minded and be watchful. Your adversary, the devil prowls around, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking for someone to destroy. There's two wars going on. One is a godly war. There's a spiritual and then there's also an evil war. And so the um, if you think about um, every day, we once we leave our house or once we wake up in the morning, there's an adversary. And that adversary's main sole responsibility is to defeat you from getting the kingdom of God out. He's to he's 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 roaring. He's he's prouncing around. He knows the Bible backwards and forwards. He knows uh, our weaknesses. He he has a strategy to defeat us. And in every single day, if he can get you to be shut up, he wins. If he can get you not to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, he wins. If he can get you to worry, he wins. If he can get you to get your eyes off of God, he wins. If he can get you to fight with your spouse, he wins. If he can get you to have an angry outburst, he wins. And so there's that's his job. His job is to defeat you. But then there's the other side. And the other side is God, greater is he that's in us than Amen. he that's in this world. Amen. The other side is that, that God has already claimed victory. The wow. Is that it? Wow. Well, what do you guys think of that show? Remember that show? Man. It's so neat to hear the old, the younger you <laughs> <laughs> from way back six months ago. Right. What, what episode was that? I, I, I don't know. Yeah. That was really good. So, I mean, what do you guys remember about that? That was a good show. Oh, that was our longest show. We went in an hour and 27 minutes on that wow. show. Wow. You but know then what, we needed to get it in. You know what really stood out to me about that show is that we kept talking about the enemy wants us to be isolated. Yeah. He wants to get us away from our church family, yeah. our our discipleship yeah. family, our life group family, and and get our focus on ourselves. That I remember that very vividly, yeah. and that really stood out to me. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. Pastor Rick really had a lot of good insight. Um, and just because I think he did like a whole like discipleship or something on that. He had a whole platform that he had set up. Yeah. He's got, he's done a lot of work on spiritual war warfare. It's kind of in his wheelhouse and yeah, but that, I mean, that was powerful. If you're listening to this, go back and look for that. If you haven't heard it, the spiritual tax, listen to that show, because I promise you, you will be blessed and to help you navigate this this attack that's happened. You don't, a lot of us don't even realize that you're being attacked every day, but if you're trying to serve the Lord or you're trying to give your life to Jesus, or you're trying to uh, minister to other people, I promise you, Satan does not want that to happen. Um, that would be it. All right, let's do one more. So yeah, hold on. Let me, oh, a couple ahead. of things stood out to me. I oh. wanted to share as well. Oh, so yeah. I, the first thing was how much, and we see this every day with people fighting each other. And so my thought was, and, and I went to, it went to political and uh, yeah, if you want to check it out, it's episode 27, yeah. but you know, and, and I know we have listeners all over the world, but I, the political atmosphere in the, in the United States is very divided right now. And I, I think so often we're, we feel like we're attacking each other and we forget exactly what we heard in that clip that this is a, this is a battle, this <laughs> cosmic battle, I think is how we said it. Um, you know, this isn't flesh and blood. We shouldn't be battling each other. We should realize who the real enemy is. And, and in that, so here's what came to mind. I mean, you know, you have so many people that are, you know, politically minded and they're calling out the other side or just angry at the other side where, you know, regardless of who you voted for in the last election, you should be praying for your leadership. Amen. You should be praying that they, they they're seeking divine wisdom, that they're, they're seeking guidance. Um, you know, th this hatred and stuff is just awful. And it's just, we need to stop fighting with each other. And then another thing that kind of stuck, stuck out to me was it's not, you know, and I know that was a show about spiritual battles and about, you know, fighting the enemy, but 
you know, sometimes God is just trying to teach us something. You know, it's not always the, every time we come across something, it's not always the enemy. Sometimes it's God who's just trying to refine us and make him, make us more like his son. So those are kind of the two things that stuck out to me here in that clip. Episode 27. Seven. Yeah. The difference between trials and, and temptations. Right? Yeah. 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 Right. I think Ephesians six was our, our, our cornerstone verse that we use for that one. All right. What's the next one? How to forgive. All right. Let's listen to that. Why is forgiving ourselves so important? There's two things that we're doing when, when we don't forgive ourselves. Number one, we are choosing a, an identity of failure. Mm. And God has given us an identity of victory. Yes. And Romans 8, if you look at that, it starts off saying there's therefore no condemnation. Right. And then it, then it ends with saying you're more than conquerors and there's nothing that can happen that can separate you from the love of God. Amen. The second thing, and I know I'm going to use extreme language, Come on. but what unforgiveness of self and identifying with failure is self mutilization. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, there is pain in your life. And the way you're medicating the pain and woundedness of your life is you are resounding what Satan is whispering in your mind. I am no good. I am not worthy. I am. I, and that is a choice of medicating the pain that's already mm. there by adding to it. And medicating the wound that's there by distracting it from really what your hurt is. And and uh, here, here's something else. It It's putting everything, like Pete said, you're in the center of the picture. Hmm. But what we need to do is we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. And we are who Jesus says we are. And if he says we're totally forgiven, and, and you brought up 2 Corinthians 5, Look at verse 21. It says, God made him who knew no sin yeah. to be sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. If you know Jesus Christ, you are righteous, mm. period. Because the imputation of that righteousness that was given to you when you got saved. And that's exactly what you were saying. Yeah. Pete. The next thing would do would be ask forgiveness from others that you have wronged. Um, you know, go to people that uh, you have hurt and, uh, you know, maybe you sinned against and, and ask for their for forgiveness. I and mean, why is this important? Yeah, James 5, 16 says, Conf confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous uh, of a righteous man avail much. Wow. How to forgive. That's a great show. So that was episode 26, Pete. That was episode 26. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank our executive producer for letting me oh. know. So what did you guys think of that? That was powerful. That was good. self mutilization How Say or, that again? I don't know. What did you say, Bear? Yeah, it's self mutilization like cutting yourself, mm. you know, to deflect the pain you make pain somewhere else it's like major pain yeah you say you want me to take care of that pain he yeah. breaks your finger yeah. you know your <laughs> yeah. leg doesn't hurt anymore right <laughs> yeah so i mean if you don't forgive you're basically hurting yourself you need to forgive you need to set yourself free mm -hmm. by forgiving and stop putting all of that thinking about yourself so much is the reason why you're in the pain just let it go surrender to god be free it's like right. drinking poison and trying to hurt somebody else by drinking poison, right? It almost but, sounded like an AA meeting or something, you know, go forgive somebody, you know, what is the, one of the five steps or 12 steps? Or <laughs> that was a really good show though. Is it just me or is it still weird hearing your own voice? Yeah, um, it is a little that's different. strange. <laughs> <laughs> it's always been that. All right, let's do one more. So mission-minded. This one was, uh, I don't remember, but this one we had 20,000 views. I don't know what show that was, episode something, but let's go ahead and that listen narrows to that it down. Yeah. Theologian Christopher Wright wrote, it is not so much that God has a mission for his church, for his church in the world, but that God has a church for the mission in the world. Mission was not made for the church. The church was made for mission. God's a mission. Today, missional is a popular church word. It's a good phrase, but it carries a little baggage. Being mission-minded is an effort to balance the realities that the church was made for God's mission. And the church is itself a mission in that God is constantly or consistently working in his people, transforming us to reflect the character of Christ. Uh, to be a missional minded is 
when when God was calling us, when when we He called us to be set apart for Him, He basically says, "I come, I call you to die to yourself. You you no longer have rights to yourself. You are now uh, called by my by me for my purpose. You are called to as an adopted child. You're now into my family, and now my family does. You know, as for me and my house, we will do the, serve the Lord. Well, God's saying the same thing. As for you, my, me and my house, we were going to do God's work, and so." Um, back in the days, I mean, what he's basically saying, a lot of people think that you go to church and then you go on a mission or, you know, mission is you go to church and then you, you serve the community, you feed the poor, you do all that. Although that's, that's good, but that's not what it's saying. What we're saying here, what we're saying is that every aspect of your life is missional. When you wake up in the morning, you know, how you respond to your wife and her breath is missional. You know, it, it, it's how you how you approach your workplace is missional. Your mindset is constantly thinking with intention that I am about my father's business. I am no longer living my life for my my pleasure, my wants, my feelings. I am living my life so that God would be glorified. I'm living my life in such a way that He would become the famous one. And there was I feel like they cut you off there. Yeah, there was, I think Barry was going to come in on that. I think we just did a two-minute clip. What episode was that? I don't know. 35, I <laughs> oh, think. Oh, okay. Yeah, 35. Yeah. Thank you, producer. <laughs> it's You're not I welcome. who live, but Christ through but me, But right? I still really believe that we need to do a book on that. I think we should take the, the three, the two episodes that we did, because we did one and two, and just put it together because what we said, there was so much that we said, there was so much meat, there was so much positive uh, help or to be able to help people in those, in that we need what to What it means to live mission-mindedly, yeah. Yeah. something like that. Yeah. Mission-minded purpose. I don't know, Mission, something. I mean, right. that there's just too much. And it's, and I think it, like you said, like we said at the beginning of the show, it's just, there's so much in that, that just blessed us. I mean, just absolutely is who we are. I don't know. I'm kind of tongue tied right now. Yeah. It, I remember us saying, Pete, that we're either a hospital or a country club mm. as a church. And, uh, you know, I, I really believe that God intended us to be a hospital yeah. and for hurting people to help people and, and to produce people that go out and help hurting people. And that's, that's what being missional minded that if, if, you know, my, my pastor said that he created Liberty university so that there would be Christian teachers, Christian lawyers, Christian doctors, Christian coaches, Christian, mm. that you wouldn't just be a teacher, but you would be a Christian teacher and mm. that you would realize that you are a champion for Christ to impact the culture. And that's what Mr. Mind is all about for me. I, when you said they're talking about the mission or the hospital or the country club, it made me think of we're all, we all need triage at some time. We all need help. I mean, we're all going to the hospital. We're all screwed up. We all have baggage. We all have made choices somewhere in our life that wasn't the very best choice. And so we come there and we get fixed up. Some of us are in a bed and can't do anything, but other people are helping you. They're helping you by serving you, feeding you, putting IVs in you. Uh, they're doing something in such a way to help you get, recover, to get through the, the trauma that you've been through. And then once you get help and you start, and now you're able to walk and you're able to do that, but maybe you still have a bandage over your head, or maybe you still have something that's still lingering that just isn't being healed, but you're able to now serve, you're able to now help, but you're still a little screwed up. You're still not fully perfect. And very rarely does anybody, if not, never, do they able to leave that hospital perfectly good. You can get to a point where you might get to the, you know, the, the director level or the, you know, the top, top shelf level where you've, you've, you've been healed, you've fully surrendered, you've fully been recovered, you've been, been rehabilitated, that you're, you're now demonstrating God's love and gentleness and kindness and things, but you're still a little messed up. You, you never arrive until you arrive. You never finally do it. But I don't know. I just had that vision as, as he said that, you know, in the country club is we're not there to just fancy you. We don't want to have a church to say, hey, listen to this great music, let's feed you, let's all this and all this entertainment. I mean, a church should be there to challenge their people to say, hey, go serve, go help. Stop throwing rocks at the people that are screwed up as you are, you know? Yeah, and I see, you see a country club as kind of being exclusive too. You know, you get in there right. and you're like, I don't want that person coming in here. But whereas a hospital, nobody gets turned away at the ER. 
You know, they're hurting. They come in and, you know, it's all hands on deck to help this person out. So that is a great picture. Well, there's Pat, so, go ahead. so many churches now have a branding where they have only certain people that they brand. They have to have a certain look. They have a certain, you know, they have to look this way. There's all of that. And it's like, you know, it just completely eliminates all the other people. Yeah. And it's like, that's the country that's club mentality. Country club. Yep. Yeah. And that's completely not what God wants. We should be, a, we're a ragtag people. We're fat, we're skinny, we're good looking, we're ugly. Some of us have great clothes. Some of us don't. I mean, some of us, you know what I'm saying? We're just coming as we are before the altar of Christ, surrender to him, just broken and ready to receive whatever that is that God has to say. We're still all children of God, right? That's it. And then, so the other thing I was hearing when, when Barry was talking, you were talking about the Christian teachers and Christian, you know, whatever, doctors and lawyers. And I think that's so true. I think, especially in America, and I think it's probably maybe worse here than other parts of the world. We really, I, a lot of us identify ourselves by what we do. Yeah. And really, we should be Christians who teach, Amen. Christians who Always. build gaming platforms, Christians who preach, you know, that that's what that's who we are. I get that. I get that a lot, Bob. You know, well, Pastor, you work for the church full time. Oh, I do. Do I? You know, they, they like, so does that mean you're a part-time Christian? <laughs> oh, I'm a full-time Christian. You're a part-time. Uh, Come truth, on now. Wow. That. There's a lot of truth of that. If, if, Ouch. if we're walking with Jesus in intimacy and we're sitting at his feet, we're getting the author and finisher of all life's wisdom and knowledge. Mm -hmm. We have all the answers, not the world. Right. The world's recycled. We have the freshness. We have the new stuff. We should be the ones reinventing things. We should be the ones leading in technology, leading in doctor, leading yes. in all of these things. Right. We have all the answers. We have God as our, if God before us, the Bible says, who could be against you? I think we spent too much time trying to fit in and we, we really should be a little weird. We, we should look different. We should sm not smell different. I don't want to fit into look. this world. No, no, no way. No. I'm okay being the square peg in a round hole. Yeah, to, to, to reiterate what you said, Pete, if God has told us you lack wisdom, come and ask me for it. The God of all wisdom, mm -hmm. the God that knows everything tells us as Christian to come to him and we can ask for that wisdom. That's right. We should be the best doctors. We should yep. be the best tasters. So. We should be the best scientists. We should be the best at everything that we do because we can plug into the greatest <laughs> source of knowledge that's ever existed and that's the lord and you know the other thing i thought about being a hospital is what are we really trying to do we're trying to make people healthy yeah. and how do you define health it, it, it is it is christ likeness and that's what we want to make people leave looking like is christ right yeah. we want to send them out looking acting living breathing like christ and so that's the goal yeah you know, as, as, as I was thinking that, it made me think of, we had one lady on our show. We've had one guest girl, uh, Gabriella. Do you remember right. that? I do. I don't think Barry was there, but that was on the prodigal son. And the way that that's, that show came up is, is Bob was preaching that week on the prodigal son. And so we thought, Hey, that would be really cool to actually do kind of what you're going to be preaching on the show. And that show ended up being really, really good. It's powerful. Just uh, talking about the product. And you had a lot of passion on that. That was fun. And the message you taught was really good. But yeah, we had a girl. So we finally had a girl. Lord, if there's any women out there that would like to be on a show that, that would like to hang out with us, talk to us. We would love to have you on the show. It's just, it's hard to, for us to find them, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you got to know. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. I mean, because we talk really fast. Once you get on the show, you realize like, whoa, you got to keep up with us. Because I think Gabrielle is like, whoa, I got to really. Well, I don't think it's just hard for women. I think it's hard for everybody. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's hard yeah. for anybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just saying. All right. What else we have? So we had Pastor Rodney on the show. You remember that? So Pastor Rodney of Rethink Life. He came on and talked about how to share your faith. Yeah. That was what? Episode 20. Oh, you remember when we did the, uh, we did like five shows on End Times. We didn't finish that because it was really hard. Yeah, we were going to do that for like to the end of time and we were going to do it but i mean this is what happened this when we remember you talked about being stretched at the very yes, end yes that series stretched us like no other oh, so we had to difficult. do so much study we had to do so much research just to make sure we sounded halfway uh, understanding I had, I had to google so many words and so so we i mean if we just had ib on every single week right? remember that he was on episode 17 if IB would have just been on, because that guy just knew backwards and forwards, all of that stuff, 
man, that would have been really nice. But well, if we didn't move to Tennessee, we could probably get him on more. Yeah. I hear he's coming to Florida though for the winter. Maybe well, we can get him on. Yeah, we'll finish up the the others. <laughs> <laughs> Don't commit us to that, brother. <laughs> so IB, if you're listening, we need to book you. He had a really cool background. Yeah, he did. You remember he's that? He's from outer space. Yeah, he he was in. Yeah, he was in Tennessee, and he had that outer space background. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But um. One of our shows, though, In Time Prophecy, had one of the highest ratings and highest listening rates. And I don't remember I think one. people are still fascinated by it. Yeah. I think there's, there's a hunger for it, no doubt. Uh, started the short Bible. Pro- I forget. Episode 15. I don't know. It had one of the highest that we had. When was it? That was like March? Somewhere around yeah, Episode there. 15. Yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah, my favorite I loved was, remember that I, why, why All Religions Suck? <laughs> that was, you that just was, liked it because you could say suck on the show. Uh, that was why oh, we say a lot of words like that. <laughs> We get away with stuff on the Riot Podcast that we can't get away with in front of the church. Uh, so we do get away with some of the stuff. But that was cool because we really did talk about a lot of why religion sucks. I remember that. It show. still does. It does. Yeah. And I tell people that and they're like, wait, aren't you religious? Like, that's see, this misconception. Yeah. yeah. Religion does suck. Yeah. Religion just tears you apart, man. It's, it's because we have a relationship and religion is man trying to perform and be accepted by God. But religion uh, is, is a is a doom to fail from the start. Yep. It's the tower of Babel. It's when Jesus said, come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, take my yoke upon you. That's a relationship. That's a partnership. That's friendship. Yeah. I don't, I don't do good works because I want God to be happy with me. I can, it's not, it has nothing to do with that. Nope. I do good works is because I was broken in his presence and he loved me in spite of my stupidity. And, and, and that is what changed me. And it's like, it is nothing that I deserve. It's not, it's not how smart I am because the more that I get to know Jesus, the more dumber I become. I mean, I realize I have no idea what I'm talking about half the time. And I'm just, I'm so depending upon his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding. And uh, so, yeah. So the more you realize how much God loves you and the more love you fall in love, the more you fall in love with God, the more those good works just come naturally. That kind of sums up the book of James, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah religious people are like, I know this. People I've studied confused. for 15 yeah. years. I've pastored for this long. <laughs> I know, you know, I'm this, I've connected with these people and I've been doing this and this and this and this for so long. And dude, I'm just like, okay, that's great. You know, I just, I'm just happy to be here. You know, I mean, that's just, that's the relationship. I'm just, I'm just happy to be in the same, same area that you're in, you know, you know, so be it. So listen to that. That was a cool show. That was eight months ago. Wow. Did you believe that? Really? It doesn't seem that long ago, uh, but that was episode 14. Wow. Episode 14, 13 and 14 was right. Religious sex. There was yes. two of them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so listen to that guys. It was a really good show. That was a good show. Yeah. I'm going to go back and listen to it. Yeah. Ja, then we had a uh, Super Bowl quarterback. You remember that? Um, Jay, Jay Schrader. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Things I, I really like that show. Yeah, that was fun. Things have picked up for him. He's doing some big stuff right now, and uh, he has a, a weekly spot uh, talk, uh, sports talk nationally uh, show for for sports. He's doing that. Does I think he listen to the show? I don't think so. Every once in a while, I still talk to him because he just had uh, some of the big Raiders are just dying or something. He's been going. And doing that, he got to hang out with Joe Gibbs the other week. Did he? Yeah, at, that was uh, a fun show. Actually, that was a fun week. We got to play that charity golf tournament with him. And yeah, that, that was fun hanging out with him. Yeah, they need to do a better job of the ter- tournament, though. Jay, if you're listening to this, do a better job of the tournament. I think he already knows. We'll talk. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> that was fun. It was fun though. Yeah, I remember getting in the car. So I told you, I told the story about us getting in the car because we're so big. Both of us are big guys, and we got in this small car in London. And we could barely fit. Well, when I got into my car, I picked him up because he was at his hotel and I picked him up to bring him back into the studio. I was like looking at him, man, this barely fits us, man. It was still pretty big. He's a big dude. He recently got married too. So, Did he? Yeah. He recently got married. So he didn't invite me to his wedding. I was just going to ask. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah. man. Congratulations, yeah. Jay. You're listening, Jay. All right. So that's it. So then we had, I think we talked about everybody, all of our past um, thing, Mauricio. Longest show. Anything else, guys? That was a fun. 50, 50, 50. five. Oh, 50. 50. How do you say that? 50. Oh, that's what Jeff Wiley. He he does listen to Jeff. Hi. Hi, Jeff. Yeah, 50. Yeah. <laughs> he knows. He says it. That guy's crazy with Jeff Wiley. He just saw me on Sunday. I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, he's, he's, I've seen him on Facebook, but I haven't yeah. seen him. He's a good guy. Yeah. Anyway. Where are we at? We, we need, we need, we need, we need, Pastor, we need Pastor Barry to wrap up like. 
he only he can do. Well, yeah. I'd be honored to. Yeah. Are we ready to do that? Yeah, let's do that. Hey guys, you know, uh, I want to ask you the question: Where where will you be a, a year from now? Will you be walking with the Lord and growing and and reminiscent of all the things that God's done? Well, it's it's based upon your choices. You've got to be deliberate and you've got to make the right choice. And the right choice is to choose Jesus. Amen. He has proved himself through the resurrection that there is no one like him and that he is who he said he was. He is the son of God and he is the Messiah. And he said these words, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no man comes to the father except through me. So do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you don't make it another year, that you'll spend eternity with him. I pray so. I really do. I, I really pray that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you don't have a hope so face. You, you have a first John 5, 13. I know that I'm going to heaven. You know, it gives you a confidence to live life and it gives you a confidence that God's in control of your life. And so if you're thinking, well, how can I know? I want to give you just some simple things. Number one, you got to admit that you're a sinner. You got to understand that you don't measure up and that, that we all fall short of the glory of God and his standard. And, and there's a, a penalty or a wage for sin that we must pay, or we must have someone else play it on our behalf. And that's what Jesus Christ did. He went to the cross to pay our debt. He went to the cross to pay our penalty. And it says in Isaiah 53, by his stripes, we are healed of the stain of sin. And so I just encourage you. I, 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 I beg you, do you, have you admitted that you're a sinner and your need for a holy God to save you? The second thing you must do is you must believe. You must believe that Jesus died for your sin and it was his perfect blood, just like the Israelites put the blood of the lamb on their doorpost and the death angel passed them by that Jesus uh, blood is sprinkled on the doorpost of your heart and that it, you will not taste death or hell because of that. <laughs> And uh, you got to believe that he died for you. You must believe that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, that Jesus is alive and that he conquered death. He conquered hell. He conquered Satan and he conquered um, all of our sin. And he is victorious. He reigns and he, he wants to reign in your life. And so G believe that he was buried and, and that he died and that he was raised again the third day. And the last thing, you must confess him as your Lord. As, as Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in his heart, in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, the promise is this. It's not from me. It's from God. You shall be saved. Hmm. So if you would confess today, and the way we confess is, is by prayer. And I, I just want to lead you in that prayer. If you don't know for certain and for sure, why would you put it to chance? Why did you, why would you leave it at a hope so faith? Why don't you have a no so faith? If you would pray today from your heart to God's heart, these words, dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner that I don't measure up, that I've fallen and that I'm separated from you. And I don't like that. And I want to say, I'm sorry. And I want to ask you to forgive me. And God, I believe that you love me enough that you not only created me, but you sent your son Jesus to die for me so that I could ultimately have a relationship with you. And I believe not only that God in, in the form of Jesus died, but he was buried and he rose again. And because I believe that you are alive, Jesus, I confess you as my Lord, as my Messiah, as my Savior and boss and master. Come into my life right now, Jesus, and take over and sit in the driver's seat, the throne of my life, and lead me to the path that you want me to serve you on. Guide me and direct me. And Lord, I just commit my life to you. And I thank you for saving me and giving me a no-so faith. In Jesus' name, 
Amen and hallelujah. Mm. Thank you for letting me share, man. Mm. Thank you for listening. Amen. If that was you, we would love to hear from you. If you gave your life to the Lord, if you go on to riotpodcast.co, C-O, and click on No God, go down to the bottom. There's a part there that you could just say, yes, I gave my life to the Lord. Fill out that sheet uh, that's there, and we would love to get in contact with you and, and, and um, just reach out to you and get you connected. You know, I, I just thinking of this show, if that if 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 it really comes down to anything our hearts desire is that people would draw closer to the lord that they would love him but more than anything else if they don't know jesus that they would come and and i and i pray that you know i know one day when we probably arrive in heaven we'll be able to see and we'll look back of all the people that might be gave their lives to the Lord and, and through the ministry or through whatever, but that is what, it's going to be awesome. That is what matters most. And I know that out of all those people that have listened, we talked about this and we're just doing this for Jesus. We just want people to love Jesus, but all those people, I'm sure there's been so many people that have listened to that. And, and I've heard testimonies from people about you, how they felt that Barry was talking directly to them, that they were, they felt like he was, he was just talking to them. Mm. And uh, I've heard that uh, multiple times from different people. And, um, and so it's, it's definitely um, what our hearts desire. But this was fun. 50, 50 shows. It's crazy. I can't believe it. What are we doing? <laughs> Nutcases. Like, this is so good. It's so fun to celebrate. And um, we don't have any champagne, but we have water. So, it, well, yeah. I it looks like champagne. Right? Yeah, you're already done. The big 5-0. That's it. Well, that was fun. You guys that are listening to podcasts, do us a favor, jump onto YouTube and subscribe and click the little bell there as well. And uh, get us to that 3000 number. We're almost there. Not for our glory, but for his glory. Amen. And um, man, everybody else, jump onto Facebook. Let us know what you think. Give us some ideas for upcoming shows. Uh, I, what are we doing next week? Any ideas yet? Can yeah. you any teasers? You got teasers you want to uh, share? Well, we're going to be doing, mystery. we'll be back in the Colossians. Okay, yeah. awesome. Finishing yeah. up. Yeah, I know we're getting close to the end of the book, yeah. so yep. that'll be fun. Yeah. But guys, so, yeah, let, let me say this to you: that it wouldn't be fifty shows without you. Amen. That's right. And and we are so honored that you would just take your time to listen, and it means the world to us. And when you get something out of it, just share it with someone mm -hmm. else. Just speak the gospel. Yeah. Speak the mm -hmm. truth. Mm -hmm. Don't don't shut up about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't stop bragging on him mm -hmm. because that's what we really want to encourage you to do. Mm -hmm. And that's what 50 is all about. That's it. It's bragging on Jesus and what he's done. And, and uh, that if he can take a redneck, a surfer and a bowler <laughs> and, uh, and bring us together for a podcast, that's pretty awesome. Amen. <laughs> that's so awesome. It is. That's too funny. Yay! So <laughs> All right, peace That's out, guys. Awesome. Have a great week of worship, guys. Bye. All the best. This has been the Riot Podcast. If you liked what you heard today, please feel free to leave a comment and share it with your friends. See you back here next week for another episode of the Riot Podcast.